I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we have an excellent example for you. It is based on polynomials. The question here is, prove that one more than the product of four consecutive numbers is a perfect square. Mathematically, you could write it as x times x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3 plus 1 equals to n square, where n is a natural number. So, the four consecutive numbers are x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. Their product plus 1 is a perfect square. That is what you need to prove. So, I hope the question is absolutely clear. You can now pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. After attending university, the winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandilani. <laughs> Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulek Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. We can first explore whether the statement can be true or not. Let's try with some values of x. So that is going to be our strategy. So, let us say that x is equal to 1. In that case, the numbers will be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. So, these are the four consecutive numbers. We are going to add 1 to it. So, what do we get? We get 2 times 3, which is 6 and times 4 is 24 plus 1 is equal to 25, right? So, so this is what we have written and that gives you 25. And we know that 25 indeed is equal to 5 squared. Makes sense. So, it does make sense. Let's explore and figure out if we could do with more examples. Let's say if x is equal to 2, in that case, what do we get? Well, the numbers could be 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, we can multiply them, add 1. What do we get? Let's check it out. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and then we have times 20, 120 plus 1. So, that gives me 121. And 121 is indeed a square of 11. You get the idea, right? So, if I extend this and if I say, well, let's take x equals 2. Let us say a number 5. So, we could write this as 5 times 4 times 3. Oh, we have to write increasing numbers, right? So, we can write this as 5 times 6 times 7 times 8. And then add 1 to it. Perfect. What do we get? Well, as the numbers are becoming larger and larger, you can use your calculator just to verify, right? And what do you get? Well, this time we get 1681. And if you do square root of 1681, you get what? You get the answer as 41. So, this is 41 squared. You see that? So, you can use calculator and figure it out. It means that, well, we are always getting a perfect square. Makes sense, right? So, do you see this? Now, looking into what we did, and if you could relate the numbers with what you are getting here, it might help you to find the solution. So, now the question is that if I have a general expression, 
can I find what could be the polynomial which represents this perfect square? So that is the question for you. Perfect. So you should multiply this and then factor and come out with the solution. Make sense? So you could multiply them and then you will get a degree 4 polynomial, right? And then you could try to factor this out. Now here is uh, one strategy which I thought I'll share with you. So when I did uh, multiply them, I got a result which was a kind of, see if I multiply all the x, we get a quartic equation, right? x to the power of 4 plus something, 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 right? So we do have a quartic equation. So that means n is a quadratic equation, right? So n can be represented by a quadratic equation. What this quadratic equation is, this is what you need to figure out. Perfect. So now I would like you to expand the given polynomial and then factor, check what could be the quadratic equation representing the left hand side. You will notice that it is a perfect square. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Join my classes online and master the subject. Now, let me also give you another hint. This can also help you to solve the question. What you can do is multiply the first and the last terms and also the middle two terms. That will help you to find trinomials which can result into the solution of this particular question. I hope this can work. So expand and factor. So in this video, I'm actually not providing you with the solution since the students really want some questions. They are fed up with the solutions online. They want something challenging. So I'm going to leave you here Figure out the solution, write them as comments in the video. And in case you really want me to help you out, send an email. I'll provide the solution in another video. Feel free to like and subscribe to my videos. Thanks for your time and all the best.